Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Today I want to show you how I use flex time to quantize and time correct the groove of multi-track drum recordings. This is just one topic that's covered in my Logic Pro 10 302 course over at macprovideo.com. So if you want to see a comprehensive course on flex time and time correction in Logic, go check that out. I'll leave a link to it in the video description below. Okay, so I have some multi-track drums that we recorded in the studio. Basically what I did was I had the drummer in the live room, and then I had the guitar player, bassist, and singer in the control room. The only thing that we planned on keeping from this recording was the drums, so that's why we kept them isolated. The singer, guitarist, and bassist were there just to play along with the drummer, and then after applying flex time correction to the drums, what we'll do in this video, we'd head back to the studio and record guitar, bass, and vocals on the time corrected drums. So this is typically the way I do things. I try to isolate the drums first, record those first, do time correction on them, and then have the other musicians and singer come back and do their overdubs. So here's an excerpt of just the drums from the song. Now that's not too bad, but you'll really hear the timing inconsistencies if I turn the metronome on. So this isn't a knock on the drummer or anything. This is pretty typical. The drummer is used to playing with the band live, not used to playing to a click in the studio. There are some really, really good drummers out there who are used to playing in the studio and who can play all day long, and their timing is within 10 milliseconds of the grid consistently. But this is more of a pop rock song, and I want to make sure that the groove, and especially the downbeats, are really locked into the grid. And the way we can do this is with flex time. So what we're going to do first is we have to edit all of these drums simultaneously. We can't edit each one individually because they'll fall out of phase. This is something that's very, very important when you're editing multi-track drums and uh, applying time correction to multi-track drums. So I'm going to open up my mixer. I'm going to drag over all of these drum tracks, and I'm going to go to this group tab assignment. Click on that and assign this to group one. Now, there's two ways to look at this. You can right-click on it and say open group settings. It'll open it up in its own little window here. Or what you can do is you can view this, we close this out, we can view this in the groups panel here in the inspector. So I'm not going to view it that way. I'm going to right click and view it in its own window because I find it a little bit easier to look at. And what you can do is you can name the group first. So I'll just call this drums. If we created a second group for maybe another group of instruments, it would show up down here, second, third, fourth, and so on. And what you can do is you can choose the shared group parameters or settings for everything in this group. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off everything because I don't want to control all the volume, all the mutes, all the pans. What I want to do is to control all of the editing of this group. I want everything else to be independent. I still want to be able to control the, the volume levels independently, but I want to be able to edit these and keep everything phase locked. So there's two uh, options here you want to make sure you select, editing and quantize locked. It used to be called phase locked in our older versions of Logic. Let's address one thing before we turn on flex time. This green Q button shows up after you create a group and you create a group with the quantize locked parameter selected. The green Q button is the Q reference button. Typically what you do is you turn the Q reference button on for drums in the mix that have the most control over the groove or most emphasis on the groove. And these tracks that you select are also the tracks that the other tracks view as a groove reference or a quantization reference. So for me, I typically keep this on the kick in, the snare top, and the tom tracks, and then I turn it off on the others. Because if you turn this on for all of them, basically it means that Logic will think that, for example, your kick mic and your room mics are both equally important in terms of establishing the groove and rhythm. Okay, so now that we have our cue reference selected for kick, snare, and toms, I'm going to click here to show flex, and then what I'm going to do is turn on flex for all of my tracks. Now, since they're all in a group together, enabling flex time on just one of the tracks will result in a flex time analysis for all of the tracks. 
After the flex analysis is done, you'll end up with something that looks like this, and you can see that flex time is enabled on all of the tracks. Now there's different flex modes that you can choose from depending on the material that you're working with. Now it's automatically selected slicing because slicing doesn't actually stretch or compress the audio, which is why it's so good for drums. Basically what slicing does is it moves the transients around and then any gaps that are produced by moving the transients around are filled by borrowing material from before and after the gap. So we'll stick with slicing for all of these. So each of these gray lines on the transients is a transient marker from the analysis. And if you click on this and move it around, you can change the position of one of the drums. But remember, because we put this in a group, when I let go, everything gets moved along with it. I find it pretty tedious to go through and use snap one of your snap modes like division and manually lock every single note to the grid. Now you can do that, but it's just gonna take a long time to do that. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use a combination of quantization and manual editing to get the best result. So you can see here we've got some 16th notes because our we have a 16th note grid up here and these notes are locking up or look like this should lock up with a 16th note grid. Cool, so I'm gonna make sure that everything's selected Go up to my region inspector, go to quantize, and then I'm gonna choose a 16th note quantization. And you'll see that each of those transient markers automatically moves to its closest intended target. So let's listen to this from the beginning and let's see if this sounds all right. I have a feeling that we're gonna to have to go through and do some manual editing as well because quantization isn't 100% accurate. It gets us most of the way there and then we can use manual, uh, manual editing to do the rest of the work. So this kick drum sounds a little out of place. Let's listen to that again. Just sounds a little weird there. And you know what? The problem isn't necessarily the kick drum because that's right on the grid. The problem is the hi-hat note right before it. The hi-hat is a little late. It's either a little late or a little early. Let's go down to the hi-hat track here. Let's create a flex marker there. And yeah, you'll see that the note needs to move, be moved over significantly. Let's give that a listen now. Perfect. So let's listen to the rest of this and see if we uh, hear anything else that sounds off. Cool. Let's go back to this fill here. I just wanted to point something out here. A note here that's faster than a 16th note on the snare. If you really want to get OCD about the placement of notes, we could change our grid to a 32nd note, and we could create a flex marker on that note and move it over to be perfectly on the grid. Again, it depends on the genre. It depends on how uh, metronomically in time you want your drums to be, or if you want the drum groove to be a little more lax. And there you go. So that's just an excerpt, but you would go through the whole song and you could apply that flex time to the entire song. So that's how you can use flex time to quantize the timing of multi-track drums. Remember that this is just one flex time and time correction topic that I cover in my Logic Pro 10 302 course over at macprovideo.com. Check out a link to it in the video description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.